All right, guys, welcome to part two of our Fender Eliminator installation video on the Kawasaki Z125. In this episode, we will be exploring the different signaling options that you have for this bike to go along with your Fender Eliminator. Obviously, when you eliminate the OEM Fender, you get rid of your uh, mounting positions for the signal lamps, and therefore you get rid of the lamps. Now you have to do something about your signaling equipment. In this video, we're gonna install the TST Industries pod signal kit. We are also gonna break that down and show you how to install the secondary kit, which is basically a remount uh, retrofit kit for your OEM signals that'll enable you to fit the OEM signals on this setup here. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about the integrated tail light that we produce here at TST Industries. Uh, that will be a separate install video. We'll just mention it at the end of this video so you see all the different options that are available to you. If you are coming across this video before seeing our Fender Illuminator video, then I would advise that you see that video first. You can link to it via the card in the corner of my screen here. Um, other than that, we can proceed to the installation of the first kit. So you guys follow along and I hope you enjoy. All right, so let's now explore what's in the kit. We have TSD Industries pod signals featuring 15 bright LEDs in each capsule. We have the pod signal mounting kit that enables you to mount those particular signals to your bracket, whether it be the standard bracket or the Elite One adjustable bracket that we also sell. And then you have the harness converters that enable you to plug the bullet connectors from your new signals into these female bullet connectors and have an OEM plug and play type installation on the other side. Now, if you guys have chosen this setup from the Fender Eliminator ad, where it was just a drop down menu, these will be included in that kit. If you guys were just cruising our website and got into the universal ad, we have a drop down menu that enables you to choose which brand of motorcycle these are gonna fit on. So for this bike, you would choose Kawasaki. All right, so the first step will be to remove the nut from the signal, making sure that the grommet stays capped in the stud. Now we will configure one of the mounting brackets onto the signal like this. And then we will use the nut that we just took off, flange first. And get it on there. Just get it look, get it snug, but we want to preserve adjustability here. Okay. Next, we will pre-install the harness converter on the signal. Very simple, yellow to yellow, black to black. And as you can see here, we have these insulating caps that do have a tendency to move. If they were to slip off and your uh, signal is uh, powered at the moment. If they touch, you cause a short circuit and you're gonna blow a fuse. So what we're gonna do now is just lock them in place. You can use harness tape or good quality um, electrical tape and we're basically just locking them in place. Just like that. We have a nice neat package here and this is ready to go onto the bike. You know, insert this end through the hole left behind by the fender and as it sticks out the other side we will route it close to this hole because we will have this routing clip go around the two wires that we're going to be inserting through here and into here. We could actually just insert one end of it here as a placeholder and um, let's say we are going to make this the left turn signal. So we will plug it into the black plug underneath this fairing. And this is just a snap OEM fit. And we can test that. We will turn the left signal on and we have flashing going on. So we're good to go. 
All right. Quick note here. If you are using our Elite One Fender Eliminator, or if you've purchased the uh, Undertale Closeout with this kit, at this point, you would remove this screw, which is there just for a cosmetic uh, cap off. You would remove that. And this would be your routing hole to the inside of the bike from the outside. All right, so if you've gotten this far and you have this component, you will need to take this back out and uh, get it through here and then put it on while once you have all the wires run through. Right, I'm gonna put that away and continue with this installation. I'm gonna let this dangle here and just configure the other side All right, so now I have both of these routed through where they lock in to this routing clip. I'm just gonna lock it in place. So I have that behind me. I'm gonna plug this right signal into the gray plug. Power up the system, test it, make sure it's operating. All right, so now, before I go any further, and install these behind the license plate. I wanna talk a little bit about using zip ties. Um, once this is in place and all the wiring is run to the inside and you have it mounted here, and you have these wires that are loose in the back. So I would recommend using zip ties around these features of the bracket. And if you do this, at this point in the installation it's a lot easier than doing it later when your license plate is already mounted so I just get the zip ties on but I do not tighten them I want to have adjustability so I could get my proper routing and tightness okay so I've done this correctly this is the right one I have it on the right side Gonna do the same thing to my left side to get it prepped. Now you wanna make sure that the bulb is past that point because you get, it, get them zip tied on here. Now you have all this excess. So be mindful of that. All right. Now we can grab our license plate and the rest of the hardware from the pod signal mounting kit. And we'll have one washer go on the 16 millimeter long screw that came with the kit. That will penetrate the license plate like so. And then you will grab the other washer and the nut. And uh, during this part of the assembly, you have to make sure that the star component of the nut right here, this is your locking component of this nut, that has to face the washer from the back of this assembly. So let's get this on here. I'm gonna get my pod signal mounting bracket aligned with this screw that I just popped through the bracket here. Now I'm gonna get the washer on it and then my locking nut. This is a little bit cumbersome here. It works really well if you have forearms or some help. All right. So now I have it hand threaded on. Again, the sequence is screw, washer, license plate, fender eliminator bracket, pod signal mounting bracket, washer, and the star nut with the star component towards the washer. I'm just gonna get it finger tight here. So I can locate it in place, but still have adjustability. And I'm gonna jump on over to the other side and perform the same thing. Screw, washer, 
license plate, fender eliminator bracket, pod signal mounting bracket, washer, and finally, our lock locking nut. As you can probably tell, I am actually slipping off the grommet from where it should be. What I'll do at the very end of this installation is uh, go over and make sure that those grommets are pressed in so that water doesn't get into our signals. All right, so I have it nice and finger tight. And now we're gonna proceed with the adjustment of all the components and leveling and centering the license plate and then tighten it all down. So first, I will level my signal and make sure that my license plate is center and looks pretty good here. You also have to keep in mind that you'll have some movement in this way. What I like to do is keep it all the way up or all the way down for these installations. I keep it down because it makes it a little bit simpler. So again, level my bracket for my signal and tighten down on this bolted connection. I'm using a four millimeter Allen. And on the back side, I have a 10 millimeter box wrench on the nut. And I'm gonna tighten down on this with enough force to hold my bracket at the angle that I've set it so that vibration, road vibrations don't end up moving it, okay? So now that I have this side done, I will repeat the steps on this side. All right, now using a 14 millimeter box wrench, I can tighten down on these signals from the rear, or from the inside rather. Now they do have a serrated flange, so you'll only get them so tight if you do over tighten these, you will likely rip out the stud from the over molded elastomer uh, body. So what I like to do here is tighten it with enough force to keep it in place and the threads will actually apply a load, an axial load to the thermoplastic piece here. And um, it will prevent the whole signal from spinning loose but you don't have to get it so tight that uh, that you'll actually rip out the stud. So once you experience some mushrooming on the thermoplastic elastomer part, you will need to stop turning the threads because then you'll be set. And then you also want to make sure that you're perpendicular to the ground with the lens surface. Now, I've done that on this side. I'm going to repeat the procedure on the right side of the bike. mushrooming here by the base so we're good there this is solid and at this point I'm just gonna tighten up the wires that are fed through my zip ties and make sure that they're routed nicely and then lock down on the zip ties Cut the excess off. Making sure I don't damage any of the wiring. All right, and then lastly on the inside here, I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have my wires dangling all over the place. I'm gonna tighten them up and wrap them tightly and away from any pinch points. All right, and that looks pretty good here. I'm gonna test the system one more time, making sure I am good to go. We have left, we have right. As mentioned in our 
other signaling videos, if your signals are flashing really fast or if they've become stuck on, that is an issue with your signaling system drawing less current than your OEM setup and uh, your bike is designed to either flash really fast or stop the flashing if the current draw gets low enough. So a fix to that is our uh, Gen 2 LED flasher relay. We have that part available on our website. You can check that out. Uh, if you are flashing correctly at the correct rate, you're good to go. All right, at this point, power down the bike, replace my seat. get this little beast off the stand and go rip it around the streets. All right, this part of the install is complete. For the second part of this video, we are going to rip this setup down and then show you how to install the OEM uh, signals on the rear setup here using our relocation kit. All right, so I'm gonna quickly tear this bike back down and we're gonna pick up from the first step. And we're back. All right, so now the bike's back in the pre-signal installation state. And now we're gonna show you guys how to install the OEM signals on the setup. So, the first step uh, will be to deconstruct this fender assembly, basically just remove the OEM signals from it. We will need to pop off these steel brackets that jam the signals in place. I'm gonna demonstrate on one of these front signals that I've taken off the bike already. Basically just wanna find a place where you could pry up on this part away from uh, the rubbery part. And that just pops off and unjams it. Enables you to just twist out uh, the signals. So I'm gonna do that now. It's fairly simple. Get both sides and I will route the wiring back into this compartment under the under the fender assembly here, making sure that I don't snag anything. Alright. Now these can be taken out. You basically want to grab them by the rubber boot and just twist and they come out it's very simple as a side note here if you guys are going to be installing our license plate light it is is a pretty good trick to just snip off a part of this wire and join this to the license plate light to have a plug and play connection. Goodbye. All right. Now we will get rid of these clips and we'll go one signal at a time here. You can see inside there's a Phillips screw that will need to be taken out self-threading type screw. It goes into a plastic boss. Comes out pretty easy. We need to retain that screw for our installation. Now you can shake out this little spacer. Now the spacer will not clear around the OEM plug, so we have a choice to make here. We could either remove the plug, which is sort of a pain. You have to pry up from the inside on these ratcheting locks and pull back on the wire. Or if you're never installing these back on the OEM setup, you can just clip this off. That is the route I'm gonna take. Just be careful not to damage the wiring. Now that's gone. All right. We could remove the boot off of the signal stock and now back this out until the plug bottoms out in there. And now you'll notice that the hole is 
pretty small here. The wires fit through it pretty easily, but the plug doesn't have a very easy time of fitting through there. That part is made of rubber and it will deform around the plug. You just have to be very careful. What I'll do is grab the plug lightly with my needle nose pliers and center the plug in that hole and press it in. It's extremely hard to do this and show you guys, but you get the gist. I'm basically just feeding the plug through without actually yanking on the wires. I don't want to dislodge the wires in there. When you do this, you have to be very careful not to deform the plug body. All right, so we got it through. We did not damage it. I'm gonna put this to the side. Let me switch sides here a little bit. These are the junk parts that I'm not reusing. And everything on this side is what I'm gonna be reusing. I'm just gonna repeat the procedure on this side. simple. Now we have these nice OEM signals prepped and ready to go. We will empty the hardware kit that we supply and identify some parts. These are the brackets that these signals will mount onto. Two nuts, two screws, four washers. That hardware is what's going to hold the entire setup to the bike. These two washers are gonna be for the interface between the bracket and the OEM signal. So let's now configure the brackets and signals. Now we have to be mindful here how to attach this. Your signals configured like this with the black flat part on top and clear lens on the bottom. So this will indicate that this is the left signal. We'll go on the left side of the bike. So we want to configure the bracket like this so that we could fit this portion onto the bike just like this. So let's now grab one of these washers and one of the screws that came out of this. And get it hand threaded in. And snug it up just a little bit. Another idea here is to leave a little bit of adjustability. I think I have a little bit too much adjustability right now. All right, so. I'm still going to be able to adjust the angle at which the signal rests and the distance from the license plate. All right, so this is ready to go on the bike. I'm going to repeat the procedure on this side. There we go, that's a little better. Again, if I had four arms, this would be a lot easier. All right, we have some adjustability. We have two signals ready to go on the bike. I'm gonna hop on over to the bike and complete the installation now. All right, so I've chosen to start with the left signal. Whether you purchased the standard fender eliminator or our adjustable version, the assembly scheme is the same. It's just gonna go behind the license plate bracket and get fastened to all of this via this hardware that goes through your license plate. All right, so first we will route this to the inside of the bike. We'll go through the hole left behind by the OEM fender and just make sure to route it properly. 
And these are color coded, so you could plug them in right away. Black to black, gray to gray. The left one is black. I'm just gonna snap it in so it holds itself in place. All right. Now, if you've also purchased the um, Undertale closeout, then the routing will be through this hole and then into the trunk compartment. All right, so for this installation, we're just gonna move forward with this sequence screw, washer, license plate, license plate bracket, and then our signal bracket, another washer, and a nut. Now what we want to do here is just thread it up, bottom it out, leave plenty of adjustability. We're gonna to have to jump over to the other side and repeat this procedure. Right side, all right, route it first. Again, if you have one of our closeouts, or if you've purchased the adjustable setup that comes with the closeout by default, it will have to go through that hole and then you can plug it in right away and then it'll hold itself in place. And now I'll grab the hardware, same sequence, screw, washer, license plate, license plate bracket, signal bracket, washer, and finally nut. At this point, I'm gonna make sure that my license plate is hanging center and level. You can actually get it off level here. So I usually go either all the way up or all the way down for this particular install. I'm gonna go down because it's easier. You can do whatever best suits your needs. All right, so now I will make sure that my signals are hanging level and start tightening this stuff down. Now, because these signals have a good amount of mass to them, you will wanna make sure that you clamp down on these bolted connections really well in the final tightening so that the road vibrations do not get them displaced and you know, get them to start creeping down. Now I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter box wrench from the underside and four millimeter Allen from the outside and get it tightened down and make sure that they don't move. Now, one thing I forgot to do that makes this install easier is to place my zip ties through here first. Not a deal breaker. I don't have to go back a step. It'll just be a little bit more cumbersome fitting them through here with the license plate in place. Um, I will do that a little bit later. Actually, I wanna address the entire positioning of these signals first. So again, we want to make sure that these are perpendicular to the ground, right? So. You wanna make sure the lens is actually perpendicular to the ground and the light will be shining directly back. And I have that here. I'm gonna do this on both sides. And now I will take a Phillips screwdriver and tighten down on that screw that holds the, the signal to the bracket. Sort of a tight fit in there with the nut in place. It's not impossible. Actually, if I scoot the signal towards the front of the bike, it exposes more of that screw and enables me to actually get it tightened in. Now I'm gonna address my, my wire routing, okay? So first, we will take that clip that came out in the disassembly and get it around these wires. 
and get it placed back into its position and lock down. Boom, that's done. Now I'm just gonna make sure these wires are off to the side and not getting in the way anywhere. I'm gonna jump to the bottom, grab my zip ties and just tie off the wires from underneath so that they're not sloppy looking. Now this is not a required step. I just like to install these in a way that they actually also look good. And you end up with not having wires hanging out everywhere. All right, that's one side. And that's the other side. And that looks really nice and neat. I'm just gonna tighten up the zip ties with a plier, snip off the excess. I'm gonna test my system, making sure that my signals are working properly. Left, right, we're looking good here. I can replace the seat. And that's it, the bike is ready to go. This installation is complete. And now we're gonna move forward to talk about the integrated taillight. All right, so we've come to the point in the video where we're gonna briefly talk about the last, what I feel is the nicest signaling option for the rear of this bike. As you can see here, we have our TST Industries programmable integrated taillight fitted onto the tail. This is what we extracted off this bike to replace it with our unit. So as you can see, it's a radical design change. And um, this unit that we manufacture is actually programmable. The button in the back will enable you to toggle through a number of programs for different light functions, starting with regular signals, regular brake, and then uh, choosing other light functions. We will have a separate video for the installation and details of this part. Uh, you can link to that in the end of this video. I'll just power up the bike to show you exactly what it looks like. So right now we have it set up on the program that has the scanning signal and strobe brake. As I mentioned, you can actually toggle through the programs and choose the combination that works best for you. All right, so this concludes our entire video on the signaling options for the Kawasaki Z125. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, please place them in the comment feed below this video. Other than that, come check out our website, read about the products, and um, see you guys later. <laughs>